Hello my beautiful patrons. How are you today? I hope you're all well. It's Tuesday today. Best day of the week. <laughs> and um, and again, it's another glorious day. It's going to be 30 degrees. Man, crazy. Um, today, I'm telling you um, about word of the day and also a little story about English history and English literature. It's all related, okay? So, the word of the day today is pugnacious, okay? It's one word, but again, it doesn't, it doesn't fit on, on one line, okay? Pugnacious. Pugnacious means um, a person who is um, basically willing to fight. Uh, what is the dictionary definition of pugnacious? Uh, let me look. Uh, it says, um, having a combative nature or truculent. Truculent means a bit like stubborn or, um, yeah, short, you know. So it's basically someone who's willing to, who's like a little fighter, okay? And, and you can see the origin of this word very clearly here, okay? Um, and if you speak a European language, Probably this looks familiar, okay? Like in Spanish, it's puño. Your puño is your fist. Okay, this is your puño. In, um, in Latin, it was pugna. This was your pugna. And what do you do with your pugna? Well, you fight, right? So, a pugnacious person is a person who, who's ready to fight for their opinion or for, um, to fight about anything. <laughs> like a... You know, like a four-year-old, basically. <laughs> um, and um, we have lots of other words based on pugna, the, the, the pugna, right? Um, in, in English, like we have a pugilist. A pugilist is a, is a fancy word for a boxer or a fighter. Um, we have the word repugnant. When you see something disgusting, you're like, ugh. It's like punching you in the face. Oh, God. Repugnant. Um, lots of great words. Um, so this, this has given birth to a lot of great vocabulary. Um, an example, well, um, <laughs> like when it, when it comes to like to constantly repeating my message about the, how I think that everyone should learn English. I'm very pugnacious about that. You know, I'm ready to fight to, to spread the word, right? <laughs> um, now, here's the next question. Do you know this, this dog, this type of dog called a pug? I don't know what this dog is called in, 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 in your language. Maybe the same thing, a pug. Let me show you a picture. This dog, this dog here. The classic pug, right? It's like short. It's like a short little, look at that. It's got the wrinkly face. It's got the wrinkly face. Now, why is this called a pug? Is it because its face looks like this? Uh, or because it's like very, Arr. no. The reason it's called pug is probably because somebody spelt another word incorrectly and the other word was puck p-u-c-k puck what is puck puck was a character from a shakespeare play called a midsummer's a midsummer night's dream and in this shakespeare play there is a character called puck and puck is a fairy a mischievous um like a mischievous sort of naughty, naughty fairy. Not, not evil or bad, just naughty, mischievous, uh, a trickster, a trickster fairy. Um, like in the play, for example, he changes one of the characters to have the head, the head of a donkey, for example. Um, and, and so this word puck, uh, this word puck, meant a little fairy, like a little creature, was a little puck. And so when you think about this little creature puck from the play, and then you think about this little doggy, this tiny little doggy, it's the same thing. 
So the reason we call the dog a pug is because of a little fairy from a play in Shakespeare. And somebody heard Puck, and then they went to their friends and said Pug, and then it changed to Pug, and it has nothing to do with this Pug. <laughs> um, so, this, this, is, this is something I love about language. How it's so random, yet strangely logical. <laughs> um, uh, big day today, um, live class today at one o'clock, and um, yeah, lots of lots of other lots of other things to do. Um, I hope you all have a great day. It's a beautiful day. Go and enjoy it, and um, I'll see you tomorrow.